If you're a React web dev trying out React Native, you will make these mistakes. I've seen it with my students, I've done some of them myself, but today I will help you to avoid all five of them. If you're new here, my name is Simon and I run galaxies.dev where I help web and mobile devs to master React Native. And in this video, I will hopefully save you hours of frustration by breaking down what not to do. If you're coming from React Web, you will most likely try in every new React Native application to simply use class name and all kinds of CSS stuff that you learned over the years. However, this will fail, at least initially. So there's a little catch to this. If you're just getting started, started in your new React Native app and you go ahead with class name and you write this out, flex, whatever, this will actually not work because styling in React Native works differently. Styling in React Native is done with an object. So you're going to put in style and then you say something like flex one, uh, align items, center. So you're going to see all of these values. They look like CSS, but they're not totally CSS. This is what's called inline styling. So you could put this on all your elements in your view. However, in most cases, you're going to see a different setup where people use a style sheet or the style sheet API from React Native to create a JavaScript like object down here with the different styles. You can think of them like the classes. And then instead of having your styles defined like this, you would use styles.container to make your code here a bit more readable. And it kind of makes it a bit easier. Now, this is the first thing, but there's a catch to this. If you like Tailwind from the web, there is actually a way to use this. So there's a package called Native Wind that you can install in your React Native application, which brings this support to your application. So I actually already did this. Let's just copy over this example here. And then you're going to see it is exactly the familiar syntax from class name right here in React Native. So this might confuse you, but most people getting started will use styles. But if you're coming from React Web, maybe you just want to stick to Tailwind if you enjoy Tailwind anyway. However, there's also a third way that I want to tell you about, and that is you can also use what's called Expo DOM component. So of course you should use Expo as we do. It's recommended for every React Native application. And with Expo DOM components, you can actually have something that looks like this. So all these views and text elements elements are gone and you're once again using pretty much clean HTML. DOM components are pretty much an epic web view in your application. Don't be frustrated, it's not like Cordova once again, it is different, it is a web view on steroids. So with the use DOM uh, directive up here, you can use DOM components in your application to spice this up with native functionality and you can just bring them into your application whenever you see fit. So I can now import my DOM component from my class and then set name equals Simon and my DOM component will most likely be displayed somewhere on my page. However, this is sometimes a bit challenging, um, especially uh, giving the right size, handling uh, the scrolling effects here. So as I said, this is tricky and confusing. You can either use styles with the inline styling. You can use style sheet with the styles API. You could install native wind, which allows you to finally use class names or use DOM components, which give you full access to the HTML stuff you're used to. Final note, there are also, of course, different other packages like Tamagui or Uni styles. So the whole landscape of styling in React Native is a bit fractured. I'm sorry for that, but we try to make the best out of it. All right, once your app looks good, the next thing that breaks your brain is navigation. In the browser, we've got the back button, we got links, maybe we got a router, but in React Native, nothing of that exists at least initially. That's where the React Navigation package comes into play. It's not just a router, you've got like uh, integration for stack, for tabs, for modals, for draw and deep linking. And all of these are probably new words to you if you're coming from React Web, but they're essential UI concepts if you're thinking about mobile applications and the applications you use on your device. But you don't just have to settle for React Navigation. In fact, the one that I prefer is currently Expo Router. Expo Router is still using React Navigation under the hood, so you get all the best of React Navigation, but you also get file-based routing and all pages have a URL. This comes very close to if you're using Next.js 
Next.js before to how you handle it with Next.js. So in your React Native application, you might have a details page here living next to the index page we just had before. And all you need to do is put in a little link component from Expo Router package. This can then link to our page here and we just need to add the according imports. Remember, we all need these things from React Native and boom, we have a push navigation in our application that exactly mimics the native behavior. Now, on top of this, there are many more benefits to Expo Router. I talk a lot about Expo Router and all the different concepts for tabs and passing params and that stuff in our Zero to Hero course on Galaxies. And I just want to mention that beyond that, there's also um, a package called React Native Bottom Test, which even gives you access to an even more native implementation of a tab bar. You can see that this renders to actually even more native stuff, even on Vision OS, TV OS, or Mac OS. Yes, these packages are possible with React Native. But essentially, I highly recommend for everyone coming from Web Dev to React Native to use Expo Router. It will be the closest experience you can get to file-based routing. So now your screens are hooked up. Great. Time to show some data, right? Here's where most devs hit a performance wall without even realizing it. On the web, you can map over arrays of 100 items without even thinking twice. In React Native, try this and your app will stutter like it's running on a potato. React Native needs to virtualize list, only render what's on the screen. And there are different ways to do this. So if you try this, come to React Native and you're just iterating over a thousand items like this, yeah, this might work if it's just text, but if there are more text elements and there are images more included, good luck. And then also try it on an Android device. A good way in React Native to render lists is using the flat list component from the React Native package. This is not the final solution, I will show you something else, but this will already give you a big boost over just mapping over your items. However, there's also an art to using flatless. There are different properties like number of columns, like the initial scroll index, initial number of items to render, uh, memoization, the key extractor. There's really a lot that goes into flatless and making this or your list performant in React Native application. Beyond that, Flatlist isn't the only way. There's also a component called Flashlist from Shopify that's actually an even better way to render your application because it's way more performant in real applications. However, lately there was also another one that's called Legendlist, which was written in just JavaScript and it is assumably even faster. However, Flashlist is currently working on a new version, so I already, already see your eyes rolling. But trust me, uh, just like styling is confusing, lists in React Native are probably not finally solved. And once you respect how rendering works in React Native, you will avoid so many janky slow list issues, especially on real devices. All right, your lists are smooth, your UI is working, but now your code base is turning into a mess. And it's only been two weeks. I see this all the time. Everything dumped into one giant component or a screens folder, business logic mixed with UI, magic hooks and state everywhere. On mobile, apps grow fast. You have deep links, navigation trees, routing logic, you have platform specific code, you have state management, background tasks. Without structure, this becomes unmaintainable. As a React web developer, you're probably used to flexible setups. And when I came from Angular to React in the past, I was even confused like how flexible React was. There was like no guideline in how you structure your projects at all. So in a React Native application, you can get away with a simple setup if your application is simple. Just like we did before with Expo Router, everything inside the app folder here turns into a route and you can have a couple of other folders. So as an example, this is how quickly your routes folder will grow because every page in here is a URL of your application. So even the routes grow quickly. So you need a setup and a way to find the right place to work on your code. You want to have components and reuse most of your logic. And what you can do is, of course, follow a setup like this. So you could have different folders like components, constants, hooks, provider, store. This setup already brings a lot of structure to most applications and it's a pretty solid thing. You can, by the way, notice that we here we have a top level app and here source and then app. This is possible with Expo Router with little configuration. But if you're really, if you're an architect planning a huge application, you might want to think more domain driven. So all of these things in here might actually become part of a feature. 
So you have feature one, you have feature two, and all of them would have this setup as a subfolder structure. That would be even more flexible. However, for small and medium sized projects, that can be overkill. And speaking of platform specific complexity, the last mistake is ignoring what mobile, well, makes mobile. Even with clean code, developers forget that mobile isn't just React in a small box. It's a totally different world with its own quirks. Your layout breaks when the keyboard pops up, or your button ends up under a notch, or a swipe gesture closes your modal on Android, but not on iOS. Things like these happen on React Native, so even if you test, you might not notice it here in a simulator, but once you know the quirks and you know how to test on a real device, you will notice that, oh, actually my text input is gone, or if I hide my header, Oh, actually my page starts up here. So these are real problems that you can avoid with different things like a keyboard avoiding view or specific keyboard controller package in React Native or using a safe area view. And always, you need to test on both iOS and Android. Even if you just write the code once, there will always be differences from simulator to emulator to real device. React Native gives you a native experience, but only if you handle these quirks. If you want to go from React Web Dev to confident mobile developer without wasting months on trial and error, that's exactly what I help with at galaxies.dev. Let me know in the comments which you mistake made first or if I should add a couple more mistakes that you make all the time. And if you want more epic mobile dev content, hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.